Hey yo everybody, Haku here with a special discussion for The Walking Dead Season 7A and I'm just going to talk about the whole first half of the season. Now next week, maybe probably on Friday, I will be doing my first thoughts and predictions for the second half of the season because I will be doing at least one video on the show every week during the break and it'll probably be on Fridays. So uh, starting this off this week, even though we already did the review this week, I wanted to talk about the first season as a whole and some of the problems it had and some of the things that I thought were good about it because there were a lot of different things that people are saying about problems or things that they liked and back and forth. A lot of people complaining about the bottling, which was probably the biggest issue with the first half of the season and it was definitely, certainly 100% an issue. Um, and an issue that could have been easily avoided. Now I personally thought it was a great half season, I really really enjoyed it. It wasn't my favorite, but uh, still very enjoyable. Um, and I think the uh, the ratings are fine. People are talking about how the ratings have dropped like uh, from last season and the season before, and they're only around 10, 11 million each and every um, episode. But the thing is, we have not dropped below 10 million. And the thing is, I'm pretty sure AMC's second biggest moneymaker or whatever was Breaking Bad, and Breaking Bad only did, what, five, six million an episode? And it was considered a huge, huge show. It was a very big show. It was very good. But um, it got five to six million per premiere, and this gets still over ten million. And I think that is uh, pretty good considering the bottling that happened this half season. Uh, could they have gotten way better um, ratings? Yeah, if AMC had uh, done things right, they 100,000% could have. But a thing that goes in with the bottling is the budget. And uh, what I'm saying about the ratings being fine is that I feel like the show could the, sh the show could go on for 20 years and have twice as uh, ha and have twice the ratings of any other show on AMC. It could easily do that if they gave it the proper budget, which they should be, but they aren't. And it's a bit ridiculous, because um, they're like, would you rather see the show go on a long time and just see it slowly die out and be not as good, or just see it end on a high point? But the thing is, it could go 20 years and still be on a high point. There are plenty of shows that have gone a very long time that are very different, of course, that uh, have gone a very long time and still go on to today and still make a lot of money to today. And I think The Walking Dead could do that if they just, if AMC just plays their cards right, but instead of doing that, instead of putting money into making sure they do different stuff, they keep it high quality, and just making sure that it is the best it can possibly be so that it carries on for another 20 years potentially even, they have decided that uh, they keep giving a lower budget to The Walking Dead, their biggest money maker, and spending all this money on all these other shows that, honestly, Breaking Bad put AMC on the map for making their own original shows, and The Walking Dead is really the only thing since then that's been really, really making the money. Mad Men, Mad Men did pretty well. Um, but it's really been the only thing that's really been raking them in some money. And they keep taking money that they're making from The Walking Dead, and instead of putting it back into the show and making sure that the show will continue on into the future, they keep putting it into these random one-off shows that don't catch on and aren't going to like aren't going to likely catch on in the hopes that they find another Breaking Bad, that they find another The Walking Dead. But instead of doing that, they could take what they already have and make it better. Um, so this could have, the the premiere had I think like 17 million. Um, they could do that just about every episode if they put more into it, but we knew that ratings were going to get lowered because the next episode's nothing but Carolyn Morgan, and we know that even if it's really good, there are some fans that just don't like them. Um, but we could have paced it better by not bottling it. Now that would have cost more money because of how they pay the actors and everything, but the thing is they should have just done that because the returns would have certainly been worth it. I just, I cannot understand why they continually, continuously, ugh, getting all mixed up, 
they keep pushing back the budget for The Walking Dead when it is their biggest money maker so that they can do all these other shows. It just, it makes no sense to me. Um, and AMC could have prevented a lot of the other problems here. Uh, like I said, the bottling is just the laziest and easiest way to do it because they get all the filming done, all the story done for the kingdom, they get it done for the hilltop, they get it done for Alexandria. Uh, it would cost more, but what would be the better way to organize it is to take the different parts that you filmed, cut it all together, and have episodes that have a little bit of each story in each. But they just said, no, we'll put all of this together, all of this together, all of this together. It is the easiest and admittedly the laziest way to edit this together. They took the easiest way all of the first half of the season, and that is the biggest thing that hurt it. Every single person I heard that even loved the show said the bottling was a bad idea, the bottling wasn't good, and even if they really liked the episode, it would have been better if they didn't bottle each episode. And the episodes that they didn't bottle are very, very good proof of that. Because uh, one other thing before I get into talking about the episodes one by one is the spoilers. I feel like the spoilers also hurt the show a lot because there were a lot of asshole people who were like, you know, we can make money, we can get some uh, ad revenue generated if we spoil somebody else's work. It's essentially stealing in a way. And it's a really douchebag asshole move. Like I've said before that people who um, spread spoilers around, that is taking away from the people making the show that you claim to be a fan of. And it's a really asshole move. It is just being a fucking dick. So um, yeah, the spoilers definitely hurt the show because people knew what was going to happen like a month after last season's finale. People knew what, were, what was going to happen. It was spoiled so long ago, and it was hard to avoid it. You go on any official The Walking Dead um, or AMC video, and the top comments are all full of spoilers and stuff, and people arguing about it. And of course it gets pushed to the top, even though it has a ton of dislikes, because a ton of people are replying to it, telling them, you're an asshole. So, um, and then arguing back and forth in that. So, the thing is, on YouTube, AMC could do like I could potentially do. Um, I could potentially, if I didn't like a comment, I don't do this, but if I didn't like a comment, I could just delete it. It's as easy as that. AMC could do the same thing. If they wanted to stop the spoilers that were happening months and months and months ahead of time, all they had to do was have somebody, anybody, an unpaid intern, go through and delete those comments. It is simply that easy. It is not difficult whatsoever. They, hell, they could even ban words that had to do with spoilers. Like, there is a lot they could have done that it seemed like they were like, eh, who cares? We're just throwing it out there, making some money on some merch. Um, and it's really, I feel like though the show and the people making the show were great, AMC, and I've heard other YouTubers and stuff that talk about The Walking Dead talk about it, AMC has built a reputation as seeming to be greedy because of some stuff they did in the past with the show, and I think continually taking the money that the show makes and not putting it back into the show but putting it into other things or just accepting it as profits is a really dick move, and it seems like with not controlling the spoilers and everything, it really feels like a slap in the face to fans of the show and that AMC keeps screwing over the people making The Walking Dead. Um, so a AMC, they're like, as long as we can get some ad revenue by doing these marathons, as long as we can sell some merchandise, screw the actual show. Like, they just, AMC is not doing The Walking Dead uh, some, uh, <laughs> it's not treating the people making it very well at this point. Uh, and that's really something that they could do. They could put the money the show is making back into the show more. They could stop spoilers. They could do all this stuff, but it seems like they're just deciding, eh, let's not. It's not even like it would cost them a lot. Like I said, an unpaid intern could have stopped the spoilers, or they could have put out fake spoilers to make it so you didn't know what the real ones were. Like, it's very, very simple. Very, very easy to uh, stop damage from happening to the show and keep your ratings up. And it seems like they purposely didn't do that. Um, 
So going through part by part, or episode by episode rather, the first episode was completely amazing. It was one of the best made episodes, I think, on television, period. Just, it was dark, it was gory, it was uh, very, very violent and bloody. But um, it was just so well written, so well filmed. The acting was amazing. It's just, just a very, very good episode. And the bottling helped it. This is the sort of episode where we needed to be focused in. We needed to be gripped by that storyline. We needed the bottling there. Did we need it anywhere else? No. Nope, we didn't. Simple as that. We could have edited, we could have actually edited the storylines throughout each other instead of just saying, okay, we'll throw this one in as one episode, we'll throw this footage as another episode. The easiest and laziest way to edit it. Um, saying edit it is very, um, very difficult sometimes when you're saying it a lot. Uh, anything else I wanted to say about episode one? I don't think so. Episode two, I loved the kingdom intro. In the comics, the hilltop is my favorite um, community, but I loved the hilltop intro here. And it quickly grew where I was like, oh man, after I saw that episode, I was like, this could be my favorite community. And then bam, because of the bottling, we see that all in one episode. Don't see him the rest of the season. Screw the kingdom. Not seeing it again. Screw Ezekiel. Not seeing him again. So uh, we saw the, all of that in episode two. Nope, not again. Uh, then episode three, I really love Dwight. Dwight's my favorite character in the comics as of recently. Um, I love what the show's doing with him, but that episode was not the best. I, I thought it was pretty good still, but um, it was the episode I think the most out of all of them that did not need to be bottled. It really needed to be interspersed with some other content. Um, so the bottling very much hurt episode three, I feel. Episode four, I thought was very funny. It's, it's odd, funny being the word to use. But uh, no one really important died. Uh, Negan's just very charismatic and funny. And we got a lot of good character work in there. Not as good as episode seven or eight, but still some pretty good character work. Episode five was a really good Hilltop episode. I really did like the episode. But when it came down to it, it was another one sort of like episode three. I think it was a bit better than episode three, but it wasn't really anything too special. Now, episode six was the one other bottle episode other than the premiere that I loved. Um, and I really did love um, episode two as well. It's just uh, looking back on it, it could have maybe been a little bit better off if we would have spread it out so that we didn't just see all the kingdom and then none of it for the rest of the half season. Um, but either way, I really did love episode six. I love that the ocean side was introduced here um, and how it was introduced. It was a really cool setup. Um, I thought Tara was awesome. I've always liked the character. I think the actress is great. Um, and I think that the actual enjoyment for that episode was more than any of them except maybe episodes one and two. It felt a lot like an old Walking Dead storyline, a scavenging out there trying to survive, um, running into a mu new community group of people kind of storyline that felt really good and fresh and I think the focus on Tara sort of as like one main character was actually really good. I loved it. I can't really say anything particularly bad about episode 6. Could it have potentially been better if like the rest of the storylines it was um, if they chopped all of episodes what two through six together and um, had the same scenes just cut together to where we were seeing a little bit of the storylines each episode, could it have been better? Yeah, maybe, I think so. Um, I think all of them could have been, honestly. Now, episode seven, that is the sanctuary intro that we wanted in episode three. Um, <clears throat> it was an amazing sanctuary int intro. I thought unbottling it, one million percent made it so much better. Having seven be unbottled a bit, for lack of a better word, it let the actual main storyline that we were doing with Carl and Negan, it let it breathe, it let us have a break from it and then come back to it to see what's going on. It made it more exciting, more, um, it, it drew you in more. And I think that that was uh, true of episode 8 as well, uh, because of the unbottling. But episode 7, it really drew you in. It was true of the storylines other than the Carl and, um, other than the Carl and Negan storyline that we saw in there. It just, it made everything feel more cohesive, it made it feel more exciting, it made it feel bigger, more important. Um, so I think the unbottling just made the story way more dynamic. 
Um, and Negan and Carl's uh, relationship there and their back and forth was great. Jeffrey Dean Morgan's acting 100% amazing again. And Chandler Riggs really stepped it up there. I really loved Carl that episode. And then episode 8, lastly, I thought was amazing, this mid-season finale. It felt so great not being all bottled up and being able to jump around to different stuff. The character work that happened throughout was great. Oh my gosh, the progress we made in the half season with Rosita, with um, Gabriel, so good. I love both of those characters right now. And Gabriel's one of those that starts off you hate him, then you come to love him characters. And Rosita, as well as a character I've always thought was boring. I've always liked the actress, but thought the character was boring. But man, this season, have I really been interested in Rosita's story. It's been really good. Um, so episode 8, just, it did so much good character work. The acting was great as well. The deaths they had were great. I'm still surprised at Olivia dying. I still don't 100%. Uh, I kind of wish we would have got to see the character grow a little bit more. I felt like there was so much potential there. Um... So yeah, I loved Olivia, so seeing that death was shocking and tragic, I thought it was really good. Um, and it really gets you excited for what we're going into next. And for one thing, with the whole first half of the um, season as a whole, I think that the way they kept so many iconic comic scenes was great, but it's even better because they kept those iconic scenes while changing around the context of how it happened or why it happened. And I, I love that. It's like comic fans still get what they want, but it's still way different. You, you're still shocked or surprised. And for TV show fans, it makes it an even more, uh, an even better story because it takes what's already there from the comics and improves upon it. It, it changes it around. It makes it better for TV audiences. It's just a very good way of doing things. And I think that the way they added in new TV show only stuff completely changed in remix comic stuff and kept some iconic comic moments doing all of that at the same time was great this half season and uh, those are basically my thoughts on it as a whole uh, it's not the best half season we've had it's not the worst half season we've had um, I thought that let's see if I could compare it to any of the others maybe better than the first half of season two the season first half of season two we just hung out on the farm the whole time uh season three not better in the first half of season three because even though we had the bs andrea and governor stuff we had some really cool stuff with um Lori and t-dog's deaths near the beginning that was pretty shocking that it happened at that area at that point in time in the season um second half of season three as well even though i hated the andrea and governor stuff was still pretty good this is on par with that, maybe a bit better than that. Uh, season 4, maybe, I don't know, Season 4 I love. It's probably my favorite season, so I can't really compare it fairly to that. Season 5, not as good as the Terminus and Hunter stuff, because I absolutely love that, but a million times, sorry, there's a piece of dust, not getting it out of the way, but a million times better than the stupid-ass Grady Hospital Beth stuff. That was like, I think I like every single storyline in The Walking Dead, except for that just because it meant nothing and made no sense. But that's... Uh, I might make a full video on that during the break, how that made no sense and was a really shitty storyline. I really can't stand that. Uh, but yeah, this was good overall. Um, did as much happen as I would have liked? No. Did we get good character work? Yeah. Do I think it would have been a million times better if we actually edited it together in a decent way rather than just throwing together a few bottle episodes? Yeah, one million percent. Uh, so yeah, that's about all I got. This video turned out way, way longer, like at least twice as long maybe as I thought it would be. But either way, I think this was a pretty good discussion, so I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like if you did like the video, and comment down there to tell me what you thought of the first half of this season, what you thought of some of these episodes, whatever you want to talk about, and what you thought of my thoughts on it all. Um, I kind of, I feel like I got distracted a bunch in there, but I felt like it was worth it. Uh, subscribe for more The Walking Dead, both TV show and also, um, also the comics. I will be doing videos on the comics as well. But I'll be doing at least one TV show video a week, like I said, probably on Fridays every week. Uh, and that's it. 
uh, follow on Twitter if you want, and I'll try to keep you uh, updated there on stuff I do for the channel and whatnot. And that's it, because uh, next week I'm not sure if I'll have something up Friday or not. I'm planning to, but because Christmas Eve is Saturday and Christmas is Sunday, uh, I'm not sure how busy I'll be. But uh, I should still have a video on Friday. That's it, though. Thank you once again for watching, and I'll see you all next time.